five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Oh, where was that coming from? We fucked up. So what else is new with you? Anyway, <clears throat> guess I've got a cold tonight. Big fucking deal. Anyway, let's go check in with a friend of ours, okay? Ladies and gentlemen... He is the smartest man in America. No, he's not the <laughs> smartest man in America. He has a room temperature IQ. He has a room temperature IQ of uh, 98.6. Uh, no, Larry Bubbles Brown, the last time we talked to him, uh, we, we talked to Larry about the fact that he really um, was, uh, 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 he's, he's amazing. You know that he he could t- tell you every for the last hundred years, every winner of the World Series and who they played, and uh, in in one case that we mentioned, you actually knew how many games it took to win the game. Yeah, a lot a lot of them I know how many games it went, but uh, and again that's from that's from childhood, and now I've gotten to the point where I can't, I can't even watch a baseball game; it bores me. Really. So much. Yeah. So you gained this knowledge because you liked baseball, right? Well, yeah, as a, as a kid growing up, yeah, I just lived for baseball. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. What did I live for? Uh, I, I, I lived for getting through the next day. I think that was about it. I, I, had, very <laughs> low, I had very low expectations in life, you know. So. Yes, and our, uh, our worthless pursuit of women was a big part of our life. <laughs> oh, you know, if I didn't have a dick, I would have so much more respect for myself, you know. It's horrible. The male sex drive is horrible, isn't it? Well, yes, it is, and it it. Uh, but I thank God now at my age, I don't have the same sex drive I once had, you know. Uh, and uh, if I if I try to jerk off, I really sputters out, you know. It, uh, <laughs> in fact, since the prostate uh, prostate uh, uh, biopsy, uh, there's blood in it, <laughs> yes, you know. Yeah. So, but no, no. It, 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 your penis, uh, as, as a male, uh, just really drives you. You know, um, horrible. You know, um, and uh, I, you know, women, women have been complaining lately about how men pursue them. Okay, and they have no idea what the drive is. Now, I've always been a gentleman, okay? So my drive was mitigated by my sense of fairness and decency, okay? But it was a hard impulse to stop. Am I mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. I mean, just uh, what I think the average man, don't, don't we have a sexual thought like every 30 seconds or something? Well, I think it's, it's all very primal, you know, it's all very primal. I mean, we're, we're, that's our job. And I say that I've said this to women and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Sir. Our job is to inseminate the herd. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, um, um, uh, in, in that whole inseminating of the herd uh, is a, um, is this drive that we have on a constant basis, um, which I, you know, I, I always I always pursued sex like crazy. So did you? I remember you. You were a horn dog. <laughs> well, I was always pursuing women, but never uh, succeeding. Well, uh, succeeding, uh, you know, I the way I my problem was somebody said to me, Alex, a woman could come over to you. Take her clothes off and say "fuck me," and you'd wonder if she wanted to have sex with you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he said you're so naive about you know women who like I'd be at a party or something, and then somebody would say to me, "You know that woman just came on to you." 
And I go, really? Yeah. You should. You know, I, yeah, I same didn't, here. I, I t- huh? totally missed it. And then <laughs> we. Well, I then think we pursue women that weren't interested in us. Uh, yeah, I, well, th- th- that that was the other problem. I always chose the wrong women, you know. Right. I, if I chose the right woman, if I chosen the right woman at the very beginning, I'd probably still be married to her. Okay, you know. But uh, like, I watch these guys. I saw a thing on bon, John Bon Jovi. I, I think he something. Like he married his high school sweetheart or something, and they're still married. Right. They're still married. They still got a great marriage going for them. Now, what's that and all the about? There's a guy who could have thousands of women. Yeah. What's that all about? You know, I don't know. Yeah, understand. I know. I know a couple of people like that. They've been married for a long time. They're still like really happy, but it, it's a very rare. Well, someone once said to me, what is the. Uh, because, see, I'm an expert on marriage. Uh, and the reason I'm an expert is I've been married so many times. <laughs> that I've become an expert on marriage. And somebody said, "What's the? what do you think is the biggest uh, thing that would make it successful, you know, make it for a successful marriage? And I said, forgiveness. You know, because there's a lot of forgiving you got that goes on in a, in, a, in a long-term marriage. And that includes, by the way, if he goes out and cheats on you. Because remember, he's right. got a dick, and he's driven by a, a, a slightly different impulse than women are. You know, he, but, he's, but, and it doesn't mean he doesn't love you, but he needs a little, uh, it, it, little something on the side it, sometimes. It, it, I, I I always had a hard time explaining that, dear. Just because I f- want to fuck somebody else doesn't mean <laughs> doesn't mean I don't love you. I didn't say that I want to love somebody else, and that there's a difference in that. You know, uh, the, the the part that wants to fuck that woman I saw at the party uh, is 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 my penis talking. Uh, right. When I tell you I love you and the reason I'm with you and I stay with you is because of I love you, you know, and and uh, so I, I just, you know, uh, it, it, women don't tend to understand that. See, here's the difference between men and women. Men are meant to inseminate the herd. Really. I mean, that's the the natural impulse is to inseminate the herd. There is no, mm-hmm. uh, there's no um, aesthetic choice being made. Um, someone spreads their legs, you want to put something in there. Okay? All right. Women, on the other hand, are capable of having children. And the, the, the fact that they can have children makes them far more protective of their bodies than we do. You know, we, we, we're not protective of our bodies. We will fuck anything. We don't, there's not a result that comes out of that. But with women, what comes out of that is a child. And so they, they're much more uh, careful about who they have sex with, how often they have sex, and whatever. Uh, it wasn't until the pill came along that women actually got promiscuous and felt they could get promiscuous. Uh, but that, that sense that you can get pregnant and that you can have a child is one of the mitigating factors in why women are very protective about themselves, where guys aren't. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the other part of it is, is there's a difference between between penetrating and penetration. Pe- penetration is an act of invasion. And so if you if somebody's going to invade your body, you want it to be <laughs> no, you, you you want it to be in the case of women, they want somebody that they feel they could love. You know? Uh right. and and um and I don't think I'm I'm, I'm speaking as a sexist here. I mean they 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 need they need the idea that uh, of a certain amount of, of, of emotional security with a person they're having sex with. Uh, so so women just don't have sex with anybody. Okay, guys have sex with anybody. Yeah, I mean, and we don't need any emotion for it. I mean, who was the most disgusting woman you ever had sex with? And you don't don't name her, please. <laughs> But the woman, the, the woman who, when you think about it, you go, "Why the fuck did I do that?" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and God knows what. Uh, 
I don't drink, but guys that drink have told me they've woken up with women that were just, they looked at, were just horrified. Well, I, I, um, um, I, I've told this story before. I don't know if it's worth telling again. Uh, when I was working at WMCA, when I would get off at 6 o'clock in the morning, there'd be a phone call waiting for me, and it was this woman with a very sexy voice. And then for the next hour, she would tell me on the phone every nuance of what she would do to me if I were with her. <laughs> and so um, one morning she calls, and a friend of mine was with me when she called, and uh, he, he, he said, I dare you to go over there. And um, in those days, if somebody dared you, that was almost enough. But then... He double dog dared me, and that's it, <laughs> you know. So I said, well, I'll come over. Where are you? And she said, I'm at the McAlpin Hotel room, blah, blah, blah. I went, oh, okay. So I go to the McAlpin Hotel, go up to the room. The door opens. I swear to you, the woman who answers it is wider than the door. <laughs> I never heard this story. <laughs> yeah. And she looked at me, and she said, you don't have to come in if you don't want to. Well, there, I'm a nice guy. I have to admit this. I, there's a nice part of me, and I didn't want to hurt her feelings. So I said, right. no, of course I'll come in. Well, before I know it, I'm having to, like, have sex with her. It was one of those <laughs> cases where basically she had to pee for so I could follow the stream. You know, um, <laughs> And with my, with everything in me, I just and and you know what happens when when you're having sex with somebody you don't want to have sex with, you come really fast. <laughs> you it's, want to get out of you there. You want to get out of there. So I came really fast, and she said, "Oh, that's the best I ever had." I went probably, uh, and and I left. <laughs> okay, and uh, all the way home, I'm getting these chill blains down my back. You know, like oh, what did I just do? So I get home, and. I'm, I'm about ready to go to bed, and the phone rings, and it's my friend who double-dog dared me. And he said, well, what happened? I said, well, I went over there, and she opened the door. I said, she was the most gorgeous woman I ever saw in my life. I mean, mm -hmm. really sexy, big tits, small waist. I mean, gorgeous face. And he said, really? I said, yeah. He said, okay, well, I'm glad you had a good time, and he hangs up. I know what's going to happen. About two hours later, I'm sleeping. The phone rings. I pick it up, and he goes, you fucking son of a bitch. Because <laughs> he knew the room that I was going to. Uh -huh. I said, well, what happened? He said, well, she opened the door, and she said, you don't have to come in if you don't want to. <laughs> and what else was I going to do? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he dated her a second time, by the way. So he could get her over he to so he could get her over to his house in Queens, and put her on the scale. <laughs> those were the scales that went to three hundred. Do you remember those? Yeah. He said it went to three hundred, and then it went to fifteen. <laughs> oh said, my God! Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's my story. You don't have to come in if you don't want to, and that is maybe the worst ever. You know. Uh, and you would think after that a guy would swear off sex, right? No. Yeah. No, we don't square off sex. We're ready for the next woman who says you don't have to come in if you don't want to. So, uh, you know. But uh, I'd never heard that story. That's hilarious. Yeah. You and I you and I, you know, are are gentlemen and we probably never pushed things. You know, I don't think there's any woman that could say that I that I coerced her into sex. You know. Yeah, me either. But I think the uh, some women do like that really kind of aggressive guy, you know. Well, the question is, the question is in this Me Too era, I mean, um, what what is what is too aggressive? You know, um, uh, certainly uh, you find somebody attractive, uh, a guy maybe wants to have sex with her, or he'd like to even get to know her better, you know, and so he pursues it now. At what point is that pursual unacceptable? I mean, to some women, it seems like any pursual at all is unacceptable. Yeah, anything. 
And uh, to others, uh, you know, I mean, I would I would say that, you know, I never put anybody in a position where they couldn't say, well, I'm not interested, you know. And if they if they said I'm not interested, that was it, you know. Hey, that's fine. That's okay. And my dick went limp, you know. So, mm -hmm. I mean, but I just think that, that what's happening lately with the whole Me Too movement is that they're accusing some guys of things which, you know, really were silly at best. I found the whole thing with Louis C.K. silly at best. You know, here he pulled yeah. his penis out in front of him. Yeah, but he asked first. You know, he said, do you mind if I pull my penis out? And nobody said no. Or nobody said, well, if you do, I'm leaving the room. You know, nobody got up and left. They watched him pull his penis out. Now, uh, granted, I would never say to a group of women, do you mind if I pull my penis out? And I'm very proud of my penis, I might add. Uh, okay? Um, but I, I never would have ever done something like that. But if I were to do it, I would certainly ask first, and that's what Louis C.K. did, and now he can't work. He's lost everything because he asked permission. I mean, what's that all about? Yeah, and there's a few other guys that have been ruined, too, that were questionable. Yeah, and, and the problem with Louis C.K. was he was like one of the first ones, you know, in the whole Me Too thing. If he had done it, mm -hmm. if this had all been found out yesterday, I think he'd still be working. You know, because a lot of guys are still working. You know, so I mean, yeah. but 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 I think that the whole Me Too movement was an attack on men in general, and on the fact that we have certain biological imperatives that hold sway over us. Now, as to whether we are able to curb that and not allow it to do something which is antisocial, is the important question. And I've always been good at not allowing it to make me antisocial. Uh, and, you know, praise me, you know, pat me on the back. You know, so I, I, I just, you know, I just, I just think it's kind of sad, you know, uh, that some of these people are being attacked for what is, what was at the time acceptable. I mean, you got to remember, there was a time when it was acceptable for a guy to force himself, you know, and everybody, nobody... Yeah, and, uh... Yeah. You can't go back like I. Who was if they they canceled some song because it was it was a, a considered racist, but it was from 1928 oh, or something. Oh, baby, it's cold outside. Yeah, is is the one that they're making a big deal about now. Oh, that's a rape song. It's a whole cute song about the, you know, uh, baby, it's cold outside. I really must stay, but baby, it's cold outside. You, you, you must go. And he's he's convincing her that he should stay because it's cold outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it's it's not a terrible song. It was a I, when I was a kid, I loved that song, and I didn't grow up to be a rapist, you know. Uh, so I, I just I, I just think all this stuff that we go back and retroactively consider to be bad, uh, yeah. Uh, I have to admit, I would have never done, I would have never done any of the acts these guys did, okay? Never would have thought of it for a moment. Never used my position, my power, anything like that to get laid. That's just not who I am. I want somebody to like me if they want to sleep with me, you know? So uh, I would never do any of that. I'm sure there are some women out there who say I would say I did, but I didn't, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I know a couple of crazy women who have, were, well, we won't get into that. But <laughs> you do too. You've known crazy women, you know, who would accuse oh, you I think of something. If you're in this business, you're going to meet crazy people. So. I mean, can you imagine Larry Bubbles Brown being a sexual aggressor? <laughs> you know. It's, My whole life is built on being a loser. It's <laughs> being on a loser. You, you wouldn't even be an aggressor that way because you wouldn't want the rumor to get around you were. You know, no, it would ruin, it ruin. I think what you said though, that's uh, the thing is like yeah, if I was ever pursuing a woman and she I you could tell she didn't wasn't interested, I just immediately got out of there. I just 
would yeah. never pursue it. Well, either that or I wouldn't get out point. of there. I mean, if it was if if it were in a social situation, I would continue with the social situation, complete it, and then leave. And then probably I wouldn't yeah. see her again. Or right. if I if I felt that maybe that was just a momentary thing where she said no, um, for whatever reason, I might try again, see if she wants to go on a second date. If she wants to go out on a second date, and then I guess maybe there was some other reason why then she didn't want to, or maybe she was just the kind that didn't want to do it on a first date. You know, but I was always very considerate of that. I didn't want to make my I guess my greatest fear was making somebody feel uncomfortable. Yeah, me too. I hate that. You know, I would not want to make somebody feel uncomfortable for my actions. Uh, and, and, and that's kind of, uh, kind of where it's all at. But uh, anyway, so, you know, uh, but uh, do, do, you, do you remember a particular situation where it was not like mine at the, uh, at the uh, uh, McAlpin Hotel? No, I never had one like that. <laughs> that was, uh... I mean, did you ever like not turn somebody down who you wanted to turn down because you didn't want to hurt their feelings? I had a couple that I was not interested in that kept pursuing me, and I just kind of rather because I didn't want to hurt their feelings. They, I never said I didn't like them, so they it kept going on way longer than it should have. But. Well, I had somebody pursuing me, and she was uh, she was seventeen at the time, and uh, she kept pursuing me, and she would drop by my house occasionally, and she kept pursuing me, and then she turned eighteen. And so I went, uh, well, you know, I, I said to her, I said, I don't make it a policy to have sex with virgins. And she said, oh, I'm not a virgin. And the next thing you knew, we were fucking. And, <laughs> the, and the next thing you know, it became 11 years of misery. And you know who she was. Uh, my constant on-again, off-again girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, you know, so so sometimes those things where you didn't want to turn into a long term relationship, <laughs> you know. And why I pursued that for so long, I have no idea. She broke up with me in eleven years. She broke up with me eleven times, and I just went, well, this time it'll be better because the making up was always so much better than the than the than. The whole, it was it was part of our relationship was the making up, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I had one. I had one of those where it was constantly, constantly breaking up and getting back together. Just so much drama well, and shit. That, <laughs> well, we were broken up when the earthquake took place, the Loma Prieta, right? But she was with yeah, me. Yeah, I remember that. And she you, was you with. That was great. That she, night, she was with me when it happened. So she came back. And that night, even though we had broken up, we had sex. And I have to say, it was maybe one of the best sex, sex or sexual times that I'd ever had. And I call it a rubble fuck. That if, <laughs> there, that if, if there's ever a tragedy in the world, try and be there at that time, like a major earthquake. Because the sex you're going to have after that is the best sex you will ever have. And I asked. Yeah, it's probably because you think it might be your last. Well, one. I asked a psychologist about this, and he said it. It's a known fact that you, as human beings, have the desire to perpetrate your species, and in moments of danger like that, it becomes far more intense. Yeah. And so the danger, you know, there was smoke in the air, and there were sirens going off, and uh, there were people. Running up and down the street. After shock. <laughs> yeah, after shocks and whatever. And I swear to you, that night we had the best sex we ever had. I don't know if you were anybody with anybody after the Loma Prieta, but um, it, it's, it was just, it was wonderful. So I'd like to have one more rubble fuck before I die, you know. Well, maybe it'll. <laughs> Maybe it'll happen. I'll take girlfriend to like earthquake an earthquake zone and hope the big one hits. You know, <laughs> she doesn't want to move to California, but I'm telling her now that's the best sex we will ever have. Okay. So, anyway, so here we are: Larry Bubbles Brown, Alex Bennett, two of America's biggest losers, 
um, talking about sexual exploits. And, Rubble you know, fuck, I like that. And, <laughs> Rubble and, fuck. and I think both of us did pretty well in our time because we were nice guys about it all. And I'm sure you Yeah, were. Some, women, uh, some women do appreciate when you're nice to them. I, the, uh, a friend of mine told me if you ignore a woman or you're kind of mean to her, <laughs> that's, they seem to like that more. I was never good at that. Well, that's because they were, you're a challenge at that point. Hey, listen, we've yeah. run out of time here. Look, we talked about sex with Larry Bubbles Brown. And World Series. <laughs> and the World Series. And what happens when you want to keep from coming? You think about baseball. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Wait a minute. That was last week. Oh, okay. Oh, this is going to be happy. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. <laughs> it was yummy. It was terrific. I ate way too much. Talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody! <clears throat> Hear that voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a cold over Thanksgiving. Yeah, got a cold. I don't know how I got a cold. I <clears throat> I don't go out and see people. I don't spend time out of doors. I don't, uh, I, there's nobody I could catch it from. So I don't know. I don't know what the story is. Anyway, and I'm, so I'm feeling a little out of it tonight. <clears throat> and I wasn't going to do a show because of the cold. But then I decided I better do a show because people go, oh, he never does a show on, on th- Tuesday anymore. So I felt that I should, uh, I should do it. Okay? All right. But if I blow my nose a lot tonight, don't give me a bad time. Uh, I mean, I I know I'm towards the end of the cold because you know it's that part where you uh, you get uh, the green stuff starts coming out. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, let me uh, let me see here. Let me open up my uh, Skype here. Um, come on, there we go. Activate it. There we go. I forgot. I forget how to do these things if I don't do them for a couple of days. Oh, look who's calling already. Wait a minute. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, you're there. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me get... Uh, let me get uh, uh, our schmoody's all snot-nosed. Yes, yeah, schmoody is snot-nosed. That's right. It's the snot-nosed... I can't say... The snot-nosed schmoody. Try saying that three times fast. Snot-nosed schmoody... I can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was a terrible term we had for each other uh, that we used to make other people want to vomit. Yep, totally. Yeah, yeah. What are you wearing tonight? It looks like you're. It looks like you're wearing a bathrobe, but you're not. No, I'm not. You know, this is like a. Well, it's like a. It's a. Um, what are they called? A hoodie that uh, my mom gave me from Guadalajara. Uh. Oh. <laughs> It's so silly. I know. <coughs> there I go. See? Oh, you are sick. Oh, I, I'm. I'm mm-hmm. sick as. I'm sick as. A, I've been sick as a dog. I'm actually better than Corn I was. Surgery. Hmm. There's nothing worse than dealing with sick men. No, no but I. I, I was. Uh, this. Uh, this was pretty bad uh, on uh, Thanksgiving Day. It was just horrible. Jeez. And it just Aww. kept going and going and going, and it's still kind of in there doing its thing. But uh, oh, here's here's Josh Wheeler. Oh, good. Oh, good. Do you, you feel have, better yes. though? What? Do you feel better? Do I feel better? Yeah. Yeah, like. Yeah. I mean, I could have spent the night off, but I I decided. Number one, uh, you. Wait a minute. That's not what I want. Uh, you, hold on a second. I gotta, I gotta get Josh Wheeler on here. I put up two. We have two fills on here, and that's not good. That's never a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you go. You're going away now. There's some kind of noise coming. On the next episode. Some kind of noise coming from your apartment, uh, Josh. It's kind of like a hiss. It's Phil's doppelganger. You hear it? Yeah, I hear the hiss. Yeah, yeah. Wait one moment as he as he tries to figure out what it is. Oh, it just went away. Yeah. But he may have killed All his mic. All he had to do was put his finger up and it went away. Uh, he put his finger up and try, it went away? Try this. <laughs> really? 
Oh, gee, my Skype looks funny tonight. Oh, this That's is wonderful. Because we're waving our hands. Yeah, you know what? Hey. I'm going to hang this up, and I'll have you guys call me back in a second, okay? Just, yeah, yeah no, just uh, do that in a second, okay? Let me just get no. rid of this, because there, there is something that's, uh, you know, not, not working here, okay? Bye. Okay, there we go. We got rid of it. Now we'll, uh, we'll start it up again. There was some glitching in the and it, it not you didn't see it in the on the show, uh, but I could see it here and it didn't look healthy. Come on, there we go. Okay, we're back up. Okay, everybody can start calling again, and let's see if it's any better now than it was before. Okay, all right. Here we go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. Is that who is that? Who have we got up there? Bill, are you there? Phil, who's there? Who isn't there? Come on, people, call. Hmm. Who's there? I thought I saw somebody coming up or trying to come up. Come on, call me. Damn it. Here we go. Here we go. There's Kath two. There's Hold Kathleen. Up. And uh, now it's all looking a little better. Okay. I'm going to stop worshiping him. Shh. I'm yeah. lost in the abyss. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to stop now, worshiping, now, worshiping now, him now. We're, now we're waiting for Phil. <laughs> Wait a minute, uh, or Josh to call. I'm lost in the abyss. Uh, here we Does go. Does that mean Gavin is come, using here. a device that can record and broadcast this call? Uh, there comes, uh, there comes, uh, uh, there comes, there's Josh. And now we're waiting for Phil to call. So we're on. Yeah, so you guys are on. And you, You're not back yet? No, and your sound, your, sa your sound is fine. No, I How just, it was just, that? there was this whole, this kind of. Kind of. I guess I'll hang up and try to call back again. Yeah. No, no, no. Your sound's fine. Your sound is great. Wait a minute. What did he call? What did he hang up for? What did he do that for? We had him fine. Do we have you, Kathleen? What happened to Kathleen? Oh, don't tell me this is like a fucked up uh, thing tonight. Let me see here. Phil, are you there? There's Phil. Phil? Hello. Can you hear me? And there, Hello. and there's Josh. He's still on here. Yeah, there's uh, Josh. Uh, He's what the. There you go. I All think, right. Uh, Alex is elsewhere <laughs> for the moment. What do you mean? What do you mean I'm elsewhere for the moment? Can you hear me? I uh, is he on the air? I didn't even. I don't know. Uh, he is. Um... Wait a minute. Oh, they but he doesn't him. have us. They now can't, he's, they now can't. he's saying, oh, so let me... Wait a minute. Put I can his... hear you. Uh, wait, a minute. wait a minute. What is this? Oh, Hold on a second. Saying, oh, so let me... This is... I can hear you. Oh, he hears us. <laughs> yeah, but you can't oh, okay. hear me. Alex, turn on your camera. Turn on yeah. my camera? My camera is on. We're going to change it to the Phil Meyer show. No, uh, uh, Alex, turn your camera on. I, my camera is on, Phil. Oh boy! Abre la camera. What is the problem here? Hold on. Okay. Um, well, the camera. Something's is not right because I see Josh. I see uh, Kathleen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we see. Oh wait a minute! Hold on a second. Audio video setting. Now everybody, everybody's gone. Oh boy! Welcome to the wonderful world of fucking Skype. Here we go. Quit Skype. Wait a minute. First of all, audio video settings. No, Skype is gone. Skype is just fucked. It won't even quit on me. Oh, boy. Hmm. There it goes. Now it's, it's gone. Now <clears throat> we'll try and bring Skype back up again. And let's see if we can get it to work. Oh, there is Skype. Here we go. Let me do this. Hold on a second, folks. I, you know, this is, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I didn't need this tonight. Skype not responding. Forced to quit. Okay, I'm forcing it to quit. <clears throat> there we go. Now I will try and bring Skype up again. We, um, I don't want that. Dashboard force quit. Uh, hold on a second, everybody. Just let me let me do this first. Okay, 
Okay, everybody, try calling me again, and let's see what happens. Okay, can you hear me? Can you, can you, can you hear me? Ka Kathleen, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Flick! Nobody can hear me. What is this? Oh, God almighty. Oh, no. Jeff Stein. Let me see here. Jeff, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Jeff? Jeff can't hear me. And neither can Kathleen. Let me see here. Let me go here to audio video settings. Let me see what's Well, hello. Happening. Let me see what's, what's going happening on? here. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. We're having Skype issues, apparently. Uh, hey, I guess so. No, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Issues. Can you hear? Can you hear Nothing me now? Me. No, you can't hear I me now. I never have Skype issues, but apparently Alex is. Wow, well, I'm so fight. glad uh, it's going. Man, it's usually me, and he always kind of gets bitchy about it. So you got? I know. So I've got uh, you, me, and then a little circle that says Gabnap. Testing. One, yeah, two, I see the. There we go. I see the circle. Yeah. Let yeah, me see. and then so, uh, Josh and Phil are somewhere out in Skype. Can you hear me? Can Skype, you guys hear me? My son said though? Skype hell. Hold on a second. So tell me about your son a little bit. Yeah, let them talk. So my How son old? is 14. Oh, he looks older than that. I, everybody says that. Yeah. It, he's in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Absolutely despises mm -hmm. school. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> I know. No, there's some stuff he likes, but, you know, he feels he has nothing in common with any of the kids. Luckily, he doesn't play video games. <clears throat> um, he loves movies, so. No, that doesn't work either, does it? No. No, no, wait a minute. He can listen to the music and say, oh, yeah, okay, uh, Hans Zimmer did that, or uh, Danny Elfman did that. Mm-hmm. But with the kids at the school, he just feels he has no connection because all they do is cuss, um, talk about video games, or crude jokes. Or crude jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't like the fact that, you know, one day he was telling me um, he wanted, he said, Mom, how come the girls out there dress like? Mm. He wouldn't even say the word. He said, I tookers. Up. I give up. <laughs> And I said, do you think that's appropriate? And he problem. said, no. And I said, well, you know, you have, that's the parents. If the parents buy them the clothes, then, you know, they're the, oh, the culprits behind letting their daughters wear that type of stuff. But just the fact that he doesn't like that is a good sign. Oh, really? You just moved. You got bigger. I know. I saw that. So did you. You're taking up the whole screen. I, oh, cool. have, I, I'm <laughs> I don't know what happened to Alex. So where are you? I don't. I don't know what. I'm in but... Connecticut. Oh, nice, uh, Tracy, yeah. California. Nice. Is that where you live? It's <laughs> yeah. It's like... coming through on my audio beautiful. video. Connecticut's beautiful. It was freezing today. It's snowing like crazy. Really? Webcam. Yeah. I work for Costco, but I work in their chill freeze warehouse, so I'm working in 30 degree weather every day. This is so I laugh ridiculous. at my California friends on Facebook. One of my friends was like, Oh my gosh, it's 47 degrees, and I just shook my head. I didn't comment, I just thought, Man, mm. really? I work in 30 degree weather. I mean, we're we've got snow gear on, yeah. That's funny. I wish it would snow here. Well, it does snow in California once. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Hey. Well. Hey, we have two. Yeah. Three. Uh, Three. But two. now, I've got the GabNet symbol. Uh, looks like Alex is. Hear. Alex is on YouTube. You can't hear me. I yeah, mean, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, I just can't uh, communicate with yeah. him. Yeah, Alex is on YouTube. I see his, uh, li you know, pretty much live uh, uh, YouTube picture. But on Skype, he's just a um, uh, well, here comes icon. Yeah, yeah, because there's the icon right there. 
Yeah. I don't know what the problem so, is. So uh, I rebooted my computer. I wasn't getting through. It kept telling, uh, I kept getting an error message. So uh, I rebooted the computer to, uh, to get through this time. I wasn't getting through to any conversations. Well, mine would go, it would start to ring and then it would make this poof sound. And then at one point it says, Phil Meyer and Alex Bennett would like to know how your Skype experience has been. And that just, I was uh, like, uh, X. I didn't ask the question. <laughs> I can't hear me. It was all. lying. You know what I'm totally. going to have to do? I'm going to have to reboot this whole thing. I'm going to yeah. have to reboot this whole thing. I can't. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let's try it one more time, huh? Live from Harlem in New York. Hey, listen, everybody, we were having all kinds of miseries, and we had to restart the show yet one more time. And here I am, and now we're going to try and do a program. Let me do one last thing. This is just something I have to do because I don't like the... Uh, every time I have to reboot the machine, uh, the picture that I get here is brighter than it should be, and I don't want it to be brighter than it should be, okay? Okay. So then I uh, go here, uh, down here, and I do that, and you'll see me, see that? Isn't that fun? Well, uh, that will just be there for a second while I, until I do this, and there we go with that, and then I go over to advanced, and I turn my color down, my brightness down to like a 37, and uh, I turn off the autofocus, and we're fine, and now uh, we are also online, and I want to make sure here, but we're online, and everybody can start calling me again, if they do even want to call me again, but they'll be able to hear me now, because it's working. Uh, so, um, uh, Kathleen, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, Josh, uh, Phil, where are you? Okay, time for you to give me a call. Let me know what uh, what's happening here, Okay. Come on, we want to hear from you because now my Skype is working. All right? Jeez almighty. <coughs> yeah. Uh, 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 well, I guess I can, uh, you know. What happened was we had a lot of problems here. I couldn't, they could not hear me. And so I had to reboot the whole machine, and that seemed to clean the problem up. But now they're not, uh, they're not calling me. Oh, wait a minute. For all the people who are listening to us online, um, we just restarted the show. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay. All can right. you do this? Are you there? Can you hear me? I can. Yay! Oh boy. You know, if it isn't one thing, it's fucking another. You know. Here comes Phil. Okay, we got Phil coming. All right, Phil. Come on, Phil. Phil. All right. For those people listening to the audio version of the show uh, hey. at a later time, you're going to find that uh, uh, you're just going to come in on the middle of the show or something like that. You know, but a lot of you just watch the video. Hi there, Josh. How Jeff are you? Should be calling soon. Uh, 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 yeah, Hello. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, Jeff should be calling. And uh, I, you know what it was? It was. It was. It, I had to reboot the machine. It wasn't wow. somehow my Skype wasn't picking up my video for you guys. Or audio. You know, I, I had to reboot my machine earlier, uh, just a few minutes before the show, uh, because the Skype wasn't working right. It was freezing, and it wasn't allowing me to choose GabNet they may as have, an They may have done an upgrade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it did, because my, uh, my layout looks different than it did the last time I, I, I had it open and called. Yeah. Like, you know, the the like the color scheme and stuff like that looks different and i, I didn't change anything so yeah. i had to reboot nothing well i know because you didn't don't have anything to reboot <laughs> <laughs> it was always well, we had a nice conversation 
We I did. know. I, 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 it was driving me nuts. Well, you have a good video on the show, folks, tonight. But your audio that you're going to get of this is, eh, <laughs> it's going to be kind of sucko. Uh, oh, no, no, it, hey, it uh, won't have a beginning because I forgot to turn oh, it on okay. here and record. Between so. Josh and Alex coughing and sneezing, am I, am I going to catch something? Are you guys contagious? Right. <laughs> but, no. you know, I mean, all I know is that uh, all I had to do was reboot and, then, well, you it started up. You know, it's funny that you go away for a weekend and maybe the machine's rebooted itself a couple of times for various reasons because I was having some problems this week. And uh, then you come to the weekend and you come to, to Tuesday and you figure everything's going to be fine. But everything isn't going to be fine. Yay, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. here comes Jeff. Jeff. Ladies and gentlemen, there's Jeff. Okay. Now you can hear me, right, Jeff? You sound wonderful. See, I sound wonderful. Of course, I sound wonderful. <laughs> it's new screen time. Hmm. New screen. Yeah. Oh, there you got it. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, That's a real pro. I, I'm getting. All right. Well, it's been a great show. Good night, everybody. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I I wasn't even going to do a show tonight, and then I said, "Well, some people will be disappointed." Kathleen asked if I was going to do a show tonight, so I said yes. So she was probably looking forward to that, right? Yeah. No, uh, you no, you was. Did you see, uh, did you have any legal work done today? What do you mean, did I have any legal work done today? Uh, was today the day you were seeing the, uh, going to court? No, it's next week. Oh, okay. But I am, I, let me, let me tell you a little story here. Uh, I'm getting a little pissed at my lawyer, okay? Mm. Which is not a good thing to do just before you're going to court. But, uh... <clears throat> All of a sudden today he writes us and he says, "Could you go down to the to Varick and uh, and Houston Street to the uh, voters register, the voter people, whatever they call them, the election board of elections, yeah. and and get a certified uh, thing of your vote that you you know where you vote, right?" <laughs> and I, I'm thinking to myself, the trial is next Monday. And this is, what, Tuesday. It, shouldn't you ask for this, like, weeks ago? And, you know, with us, it's like Varick and Houston Street is in another planet. Okay, I mean. It's in the Bowery. It's, it, no, it's not in the Bowery, but it's, 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 it's down in that area. So I, it, girlfriend took the day off today because she had something done in her back. And I said, ah, let's just go down there. You know, let's just get this over with. And it had me pissed off because I just wanted to stay home and get nurse this cold, right? So we get in, we we so we get on the on the two train, and the two train takes us to the one train, and the one train takes us to Houston, and we get out, and it's Varick and Houston Street. How easy was that? Mm -hmm. And then we go up to the the voters' place, and it's empty. There's the only people there are the people who work there. And we walk up to the guy and we tell him, hey, we want, need to get something about our voting record. He says, oh, yeah, because you need a certified record of that for some court case you're in, right? And Take I, the number and wait. Oh yeah, God. and they said, <laughs> said, we'll be with you in a second. Five minutes later, they come back. They got it all certified. We leave. We're home within an hour. But it just pissed me off that the, guy, the, the lawyer waited till today. Maybe he just figured that would be a good thing at the last minute. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, thank you. you know, I, I just wanted to make sure you were interested. I had to do something the other day for him. I had to go down uh, down here to 125th and and, uh, and and Adam Clayton Powell to the big government building there, the Adam Clayton Powell building, uh, to, uh, to get uh, some uh, certified records of the rental history of this apartment house. Can, can you bill them back for your time? I wish I could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I so, wish I fucking so could. So. Next Tuesday, you'll get a bill in the mail for $375 for the time it took him to send you the email to tell you to go get that. Oh, thing. yeah. He'll he'll probably uh, send us a bill for that. You know. <laughs> and then he wants to have a two-hour meeting with us at the end of this week uh, to... Uh, uh, to go over the stuff before we go in there. And quite frankly, I'm... I'm so out of it. I just don't even know if I can testify. I'm just, I'm just pissed. You know? Don't, don't, don't give up. You're on the last stretch. 
Yeah. Yeah, but you know? uh, this is this is getting to be the expensive stretch. Okay. Yeah. You know, trials are not cheap. You know what pisses me off? Although I do probably have some kind of recourse, is that we, to be honest with you, we did nothing wrong. The only thing we did wrong was rent an apartment from somebody who was unscrupulous. Okay? Basically, that was it. And all we, all we wanted was a nice place to live, and this was a nice place to live. And um, Jeff's been here. He'll agree it's a nice place to live, you know? And uh, I just really pissed by it, you know, uh, that, that we've had to put out all this money all this time, all this grief, for what? Not something we did not do. Yeah, but, uh, you know, nobody picks these things. It happens. You're just lucky that you were able to afford to get the justice and, uh, you know, and, and possibly wind if up. You know, wait a minute. We haven't gotten the justice yet. We don't know what this goddamn judge is going to say, you know. Or how he's gonna how he's gonna come out on this, so you know I mean uh, for all we know you know these things could go any way. I mean I, I if if everything is right, we are on the side of the right. Okay, I mean every yeah, all previous judges have said, oh listen you know the Schwarzmans uh, Schwarzman Millers have no uh, they're 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 innocents in this whole thing yeah. But, you know, we don't know if this judge is going to feel the same way. You yeah. know. Is this the hanging judge? It, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So anyway, that's, uh, so that was the, the irritable news today. The good news is <clears throat> I'm trying to clear my throat. Excuse me, folks. We guessed. I sound like an old man, don't I? Um, yeah. Join the club. I uh, I uh, I got the uh, the uh, the uh, oncologist that I was trying to get. I have an appointment on the 16th. Rudy's oncologist. Rudy's oncologist. This is the guy that saved Rudy Giuliani's life a few years back by putting seeds in his prostate. Uh, and the problem see, was he had marigolds come out of it. Well, the question is going to be how long I'm going to go with this guy before I say. You did Rudy, didn't you? You know, I know you did Rudy. And then, you know, like, thanks. Yeah, he lived. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for doing Rudy. You know, but, uh, well, no, he lived. He's, <clears throat> he survived 20 years past the, uh, the, the seeds being implanted. So I figure the guy's okay, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all, I'm just waiting for all kinds of bad news because I'm get, I get bad news all the time these days, so. Be nice well, to you got it under control. I mean, you're doing you're doing <coughs> something about it. You know what it is, and yeah. uh, you're not falling apart. Oh, really? Well, you are falling apart. I am falling you're, you're apart. Not, you're, not, with you're, not, you're not going crazy. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny when I tell people I have cancer now, mm -hmm. they they have a weird kind of reaction to it. Yeah, you know, fungus. huh? Yeah, like, like I you like I fungus. got the cooties. Yeah. Well, you had you had cancer, right, uh, uh, Kathleen? You had breast cancer. Yep. Did you find that was the same thing when you told somebody you had cancer? All of a sudden, they were like, "You know, I pretty much didn't tell anybody. The only people I told was when I was at UPS was you know my manager, and he kept it under wraps, and HR, and they kept it under wraps." Yeah, how frightening was that experience for you? It was pretty frightening because my dad died at 37 from a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. You know, and cancer runs rampant in my family. You know, when I had my son, I had his cord blood saved just in case something happens with either he or I. But now, what, what in saving the cord blood, what are you talking about? Uh, stem cells. Stem cells? Yes. Yep. Good. That's good. That was good thinking. Now, your yep. son's 14? Yeah. So 14 years ago, they stem cells were sort of cutting edge and really not. Uh, Bush was saying that you know they were bad, and uh, you know 14 years ago, uh, nobody was saying they were bad. What they were arguing was where they were getting the stem cells from. Cells from. Yeah. 
but uh, you know, Bush, uh, you know, he he didn't uh, he didn't care for it. Stem, stem cell research wasn't high on his uh, approval right. list. No, and and 14 years ago would have been in the thick of that. So, yeah. and now it's a, a part of a, a part of medicine. You know. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I did my research for six months, and I discussed it with my mom, who was a nurse. And when she was a nurse, she was first an oncology nurse. As a matter of fact, um, you know, when AIDS first came out, you know, she was, I remember her sitting us down telling us about this blood disorder. There were all kinds of rumors and stuff out there. So when I told her that I wanted to save Sean's cord blood, she said, oh, yes, absolutely yeah. Because you never know down the line. Yeah, yeah that's that was cutting edge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I pay 125 years to have it banked. Oh, really? So every November, I cut a check. Oh, yeah, yep. How expensive is it to bank it? 125 bucks a year. Yeah, nothing. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, did you hear about those uh, cryogenics uh, places that uh, were storing all sorts of things? And yeah. uh, I think the uh, the stuff melted, the the sperm yeah. melted, and uh, I think it was a sperm bank where the sperm yeah. melted. Yeah. It was a cryogenic yeah. sperm sperm yeah. bank. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Here comes Jeff. Well, not Jeff. Jeff's I mean here. Kevin. Jeff. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. I'm I'm just I'm losing it. I'm an old man now. You know. <laughs> hey. Uh, you know, how about that Biden malarkey tour? Well, wait a minute. Let, think... Well, we'll get to that in a second. Let's take one thing at a time. All right. Well, yeah. don't like drive that. us into a ditch this well, early. Well, no, it was the show. get off my lawn tour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, you know, uh, the, I, the one thing uh, in Kathleen uh, that you don't know about her is that she's a Halstead. And now that may not mean anything to you, but if you live in Chicago and you're listening to us in Chicago, you know, there's a, what, a Halstead Avenue or Boulevard or. Yeah, street? Halstead, Halstead Street runs right down the heart of Chicago. And it's actually named after uh, Caleb Halstead and possibly, I'm not too sure, it might be William Halstead. And they were uh, bankers. Oh, Great I food. thought it was named yeah. after your uh, uh, your relative, who's very famous. William Stewart Halstead was actually he was. No, tell in, tell um, him what tell him what he can any, give them a hint and let them see if they can guess what he invented. Um, well, what he introduced into surgery is what all surgeons wear now on Scrubs. their hands. <laughs> well, that's that's an off. You could shoot a goddamn. Mask. Huh? <laughs> no, uh, rubber gloves. He the introduced gloves. rubber gloves into surgery. He also did the first gallbladder surgery on his mom in his sister's kitchen. The the uh, mastectomy. Uh, 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 actually, mastectomy. actually, it wasn't as much an operation as he got mad at his mother <laughs> and went at her with a kitchen knife. <laughs> he uh, did experimentation with cocaine and dentistry. Of course, ended up addicted to it, and then uh, and addicted to morphine the whole time he was a surgeon. Yeah, he could have been in radio and get the same thing. My mom got teased when she was going to nursing school. She got teased a lot about him. Really? The uh, yeah. the, the the Kingston Mines Blues Bar is on Halstead in Chicago. It's a great blues bar. Yep. I spent yeah, a night the there one time. It's the longest, straightest street in the United States. I spent the night there one time. Oh, it was ugly leaving. I now, bet. The only time I was in Chicago was in the airport. Uh, but I understood that Michigan Avenue ran uh, the, the longest. Yeah, of, and, uh, and I got lost on South Michigan Avenue. Yeah. A, tour, a white tourist in a, in a car with a map. Not yeah. good. Nope. <laughs> now South Michigan I, I started Avenue running is that in Ohio? Lights. I started running red lights so I would get pulled over. And then yeah. I realized, oh, there's a it was the old Comiskey Park and I realized that's where it was and I started heading for that cuz I knew the freeway was right by it. Yeah. yeah. And I and I just started dodging hookers and hoping I was going to get pulled over. And Why then I hooker? saw the freeway and said, "Okay, I know where I'm at now." <laughs> Yeah, I pulled over at one stoplight to look at a map, and that's a mistake, especially oh, yeah. in a rental car. Uh, they started cleaning your windows? Oh, no. Oh, it, was, it, was, 
it was <laughs> two two o'clock, two thirty in the morning. In the morning. And there's kids out there in diapers on the street corners, burned out <laughs> buildings, and, yeah. and kids playing basketball. And I'm going, I, I am in the wrong part of town. Yeah. You ever been to the South Bronx in the seventies? No, no. <laughs> But it was that, was, like that was that was enough of an experience for me. When I told people at the plant when I went the next morning down to the plant, and they say, "What? You're on South <laughs> Michigan, <laughs> and you're here?" <laughs> I understand it goes on forever. Though. Oh yeah, it sure. does. And, and if you you know the reason I was there is because I was looking for the the sign to get me back to the freeway, and I was following it along. And I guess there was a bus parked in front of the sign that where I was supposed to turn, and I kept going straight. Oh damn. Yeah, got thrown under the bus. Because yeah. that's how Halstead Street is. The one end, it's in the whole financial district. Clear on the other end, it's the hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So rubber gloves, folks. Before that, they didn't <laughs> use rubber gloves. Were that's they the nitro scary. gloves or just the latex ones? <laughs> well, what happened is his assistant surgeon, um, when she would dip her hands in the carbolic acid, she had eczema, and if she was having a breakout, it was extremely painful. So he telegraphed the Goodyear company and said, hey, can you guys make a pair of gloves, you know, from the fingertips past the elbows, not too thick so that we lose tactile function. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they said, yeah, okay, and they sent them two pairs, and it worked, and they used them ever since. Now we use them for working on our cars. Everything, yeah. Well, I, I have a pair here. Here we go. But, <laughs> they, they, you always you always like to hear that lovely snap. I love yep. uh, yeah, I love to <laughs> <laughs> and bend over. <clears throat> it's a condom for your hand. We're going yeah. in. You know something? I can't yep, put these. We're going it, in. I, doctors put these on pretty easy. I I have problems putting them on. Of Blow course, some it, air into it first. Well, yeah. Like yeah. A, like a balloon. And then it'll be easier to... Yeah. Uh, but then they got the powder-free and the non-powder-free. And yep. Powder-freeze are easier to get on, but they suck. Yeah. Uh, it won't be snot-free in a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 you know, it's like this is the part of the cold that is... The worst. Well, it has a lot. It gives a lot. Yeah. It, it gives a lot of snot. It, it, I go... I get my, my laryngitis... You know, and uh, so, I, I, but it's not the part of the cold where you really feel bad in the head, you know. Puny, yeah, yeah. puny. So I'm, you know, I guess I'll be better in the next couple of days. But gee, did I have to go through this? And then I come in and I'm sick, and I figure I don't really don't want to do a show tonight because I'm sick, but I'll do a show anyway. And I come in and the thing fucks up on me. I mean, yeah. give me a fucking break. <laughs> Cut me some slack. Well, at least you're able to fix it. It's mm -hmm. not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's you not what I think, think it's great, it is. but it's not. I got that. So 70s. So anyway. Um, People think it's funny. Yeah, but it's I, I'm a little less, uh, Phil, I'm a little less bothered by this whole cancer thing than I was because at least I know what it is and what we got to do. You know. Yeah, it's the cards you get dealt, yeah. and, I, and I'm just, just afraid the doctors, deal with them. I'm afraid the doctor is going to say, "Oh no, no, you've got you know," because I I'm in the medium it risk kind. medium <laughs> rat, risk category, but I had a couple of those little hot spots. You know, that didn't yeah. go into an eight or anything like that, but and uh, um, so I'm I, I'm wondering if he'll say to me, uh, "Not good," you know, but my well, my doctor felt it was fine, you know. You know they'll they'll treat it, and if uh, and they'll monitor what's going on with the PSA, and yeah. they'll give you some more tests. And if uh, the, the treatments don't work, you can always do what I did. I mean, it's two weeks no, of misery. No, actually, actually, what they'll they'll do with me if it starts going back up again at my age is it put me on hormones again. They're going to put me on hormones anyway yeah. for a couple of months. So everybody, get ready for me to grow tits. And uh, and be moody and cry a lot. Might get hair. <laughs> and what's the other thing? Happens? Oh yeah, I'll gain some weight. I gain about average of nine pounds. Can Let I ask see. you on your first date? Yes, sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. In fact, you can uh, you can grab my pussy. 
you know, I mean, because it also shrinks, the, it also shrinks the penis. So, you know, I'll probably, it'll invert <laughs> itself, you know. And you they know, didn't even have to give me hormones for that. I was thinking <laughs> about it tonight, and I was thinking, you know, that penis gave me many, many serviceable years. You know, I had a lot of fun with that penis. And <laughs> if this is what happens now, I guess this is what happens now, and I'll just have to say... Goodbye, guy. Nice, nice, Just, you know, having you Try around. the other side. Hey, huh? I, I was talking to a customer today, and uh, she is, she'd gone through a lot in her life. And I had sent her a, a book, Man's Search for Meaning, uh, by Viktor Frankl. And she's got MS. Her husband committed suicide about four months ago. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, her life wasn't wasn't going all that well and so uh, she wanted me to measure for carpet today to s help her sell her house mm -hmm. and uh, you know I said yeah you know I had prostate cancer and uh, she says yeah my my dad had prostate cancer uh, he passed away she says does it work <laughs> and I said no <laughs> she says well yeah, you know it's not so bad you're alive <laughs> Well, the, yeah. ho the hope is, though, uh, um, in your case, that it might start, you know, after a certain uh, yeah, amount Yeah, there's of time. a possibility that the um, nerves will reattach. Yeah. Uh, Should have asked her to try. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? At least you're alive and well. Yeah, and that's what she said. And it, it's yeah. true. But when I first found out that I had cancer, I really just put it in a box and ignored it. Uh and uh, it was uh, Renee Collins that kept yelling at me, you know, do something about it, do something mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. And it was like a little voice in the back of my head, Renee, you know, don't, don't wait, do something. Yeah. So I had it ripped out. Thank you, Renee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think, you know, I've, I've said to you that I think you may have made the wrong decision, that there were a lot of other nah, possibilities. No, I, I, I killed two birds with one stone. My prostate was so large that I wasn't getting a decent night's sleep. I was, you know, up every hour. And uh, I just said, you know what? If I get rid of the prostate, I don't have an enlarged prostate and I don't have cancer. So yeah. I figured two birds, one stone. Uh, and that that's what weighed in mostly was this terrible uh, quality of, of sleep. And I was tired and uh, I just, uh, you know, I wanted it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's good that you got it out. You know, yeah. I mean, that you're happy. Really, it's quality of life. Well, you're happy you with the decision. You just want to yeah. get it out. Uh, yeah, 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 I guess. You know, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. About getting up ten night, ten times a night. Well, they could have. They could have done something to shrink the prostate. Uh, I tried. Uh, was, there's two things they give you: finasteride, and what's the other one? Well, the Flomax. Flomax doesn't uh, shrink the prostate. The no, finasteride they, they does. Those, yeah, I I didn't like. I felt like I had side effects. I don't know exactly what it was anymore. Well, I, guess I what remember. the side effects of no prostate are. You know, yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, the, but well, the, the sheets stay clean. You're right. <laughs> You're right. They do. And how many years ago was this? For me. Yeah. Uh, less last than two. Year? Yeah. Last year? Yeah, May, I think it was last year, yeah. Yeah. So you're you're totally cancer free? At the moment, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you all it, make me nervous. I gotta go to do this next week. It probably was localized, yeah. is what it, the whole thing was. Oh you're... yeah, I uh I had something on one side. They said that it didn't uh, uh it didn't um the, the tumor didn't rupture. Yeah, and uh, it didn't rupture. Well, I don't even have tum. I don't even have tumors. Uh, you got something. Well, I mean, I, you got something growing. I mean, uh, no, there, there, there are there. there are cancer cells in my prostate, but there are no tumors. Right. He could not well, feel yeah. any tumors. He can't see any tumors. But as the cancer cells duplicate, eventually they will become a tumor. You know, perhaps, right? perhaps yeah. at that point. But yeah. right now they Takes don't. Time. You know, although yeah. one of the cores was like, a, you know, four three, another one was a four three. Uh, four, you know, four three is is higher than you want, but it's not. No, it's still within the medium range. So. Yeah. <coughs> Let me see here. Where are my uh, cough drops? Yeah, because they told me I was a three three when they did the biopsy. Yeah. But uh, when they actually biopsied the um, 
the prostate after they removed it, mm -hmm. they said I was a four three. So, so yeah. it was probably a good thing that I. So did. you were what after they removed it? I my earphones. Uh, oh. The uh, they biopsied the prostate and I was a four three four rather three? than a three three, which is what they thought at the time of the uh, uh, prostate biopsy. Yeah, but with a four three, you still probably could have survived having radiation and uh, and. Oh and yeah. Yeah, I, w I was offered radiation, but radiation wasn't going to do anything about uh, the size of the prostate. Yeah, but I, they still, I think if they did hormones, they could shrink that prostate a bit. You know? Yeah. But, you know. I, I didn't want to do it. And and you couldn't do the seeds because your prostate was too large for the seeds. Exactly, yeah. See, my prostate is not large at all. Oh, yeah, and that's because you've been taking finasteride for the last couple of years and you shrunk it. yeah. But I think I qualify for the seeds, and I, I, I may go with the seeds, I think. The yeah. seeds they call the Bacchi... Brachiotherapy. Uh, brachy, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's, um, you know, it, 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 it is a... It's not experimental, and it works. It's as good as any other kind of radiation. Ask the, the guy... The advantage uh, is it's maybe at most one night in the hospital, yeah, and then you're the out, guy, and that's it. Ask the guy uh, how many people that have this procedure have had a reoccurrence of the cancer in the prostate. Supposedly, and how does that compare? It, supposedly, to other in methods? his case, in an article that I read on him, he said he did he had ten thousand patients with prostate cancer, yeah. that he did the seeds on five thousand, and only two had a re reoccurrence. Oh, you know, so well, that's pretty good. Two out of five thousand. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, the the, um, the urologist that I spoke to at Kaiser, the second urologist, tried to tell me that that method, which I didn't qualify for, uh, but that method, they had more reoccurrences than uh, than others, and they steered me away from proton therapy because they said it was too new and they don't have enough. Uh, yeah, uh, the data thing on the it. thing that I think I would probably go for if if it, it, this guy is in really into the seed thing, so he mm -hmm. probably will try and sell me on it, but. Um, and, you know, reoccurrence in my situation may not be reoccurrence like it would be in somebody with worse, okay? When I had that false test and I thought that I had a reoccurrence a couple, a couple months, a month or so ago, two months ago, yeah. uh, I was reading that if, uh, if I had, for instance, radiation, and it's common for prostate cancer to reoccur even after the prostate is removed because some of the cells yeah. may get yeah. end up, you know, traveling right. around. And uh, so they said that, uh, I, I believe I read this right, that they can't, that, that if they try to do uh, radiation after uh, you've had radiation on your prostate, uh, it's, it's not as successful. Uh, yeah, but but here, here's an interesting... Because, here, here's because, a, my, my, because my prostate was removed, I would have been a better candidate for radiation on a second go-around. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Here, here's what they do, actually. Um, if your cancer, um, if your cancer reoccurs, I mean, if, if your cancer travels, your prostate cancer travels right. to other parts of the body, it is the only cancer, what they can do is they can stop it with hormones. They can slow it down with hormones, even if it's spread somewhere else. I thought that the place it would go if it's spread would be bone. They said it goes to your bones. Yeah, but bone they can bone. still, I think, using hormones, yeah, bring pull it back. I really? I, I don't understand it completely. But anyway, you've got the the the, uh, the other thing they've got is this uh, cyber knife, and it it uh, it only requires five visits. I don't want the thing where I got to go for forty visits to a goddamn radiation lab. I didn't want that and, either. And for ten minutes. Uh, each one. I mean, I, I suppose you have your choice, and I would tell him, either do do the seeds if the, you feel they will do the job, or do the uh, cyber knife. I said, but I'm not going to go for forty visits. But find out if they do the seeds. If it limits any other procedures, should it not give you the results that you're looking for? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll, who cares? I'll be dead by then. Anyway. 
So. Well, it gives you something to do and topics to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Kathleen does not look happy with this discussion, but that's only because she doesn't have a prostate, and she feels right. she's being left out. No, not at all. Yeah, so... <laughs> No, Phil's I mean, may I, still may be know, in a I jar was somewhere. Worried when I found out you had prostate cancer, but you put me at ease. Yeah. Because if it had been twenty years ago or thirty years ago, it would have been far worse. Oh, and if I were younger. Yeah, yeah exactly. If I were younger, uh, younger people, if they get pro Phil got prostate cancer in his sixties, and you get it in your sixties, and it can it can be a problem. It, it can, can be aggressive. I yeah, had a yeah. friend. I have a friend that. Uh, on the night that he was supposed to be on Ben Stein's money, yeah. he was told that he had prostate cancer. And this was like 20 some odd years ago. And he was a total wreck. And so he had gotten through all of the things and they were and they had the filming and he was he couldn't answer a question to save his life. But, you know, me, a very smart guy. And he, and he did get through all the preliminary <coughs> things but that night or that day. Uh, he gets the call. He's got prostate cancer, and he was uh, c completely whacked Is out. Is he still around? Yeah. See? Yeah. What do they do? Remove the prostate, I guess. I think, no, I think he had radiation. Really? Uh, uh, I hadn't talked to him a lot about it. I, if you I, catch I, you it know. at the right time, it is the most curable of all the cancers. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I looked up, what's the most curable cancer? Number one, breast cancer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, prostate cancer so you know if you catch it in time but that's true with anything yeah you know, so well enough of that we've uh, gone down to 19 people watching us and who knows we lost a lot of them anyway earlier. they're all getting a prostate exam right now yeah what were you going to say donning, about someone's the, donning rubber gloves <laughs> biden's malarkey tour is this man yeah, is this yeah. man a I, fucking I idiot yeah, I think he should have called it the Get Off My Lawn Tour. <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's not doing too well. Uh, and and uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, she tapped out. Kamala. Yeah. Kamala. Yeah. Yeah. I I I liked her. I think she's going to be she's going to be a force in the years to come. She certainly is doing a good job as a senator, and uh, maybe she's better off there than she is out on the road fighting for a job that is useless you know yeah but well, uh, she her uh her ratings uh had dropped to the point where uh nationally she was behind uh she, she was behind just about everybody she, she was, no she was behind bloomberg bloomberg that's it yeah what she what yeah. had happened is she ran out of money yeah and and she knew she couldn't fight the bloomberg money you know, and what we're saying now, and, and this is why I don't like Bloomberg, because what he's saying to the rest of the country is, see, billionaires have enough money to run for president. Right? Well, yeah, and, but the, he thinks a lot of himself, you know, uh, especially when he was mayor. Uh, he He's part of the nanny state. Don't drink large sugary drinks. Well... I know you don't drink large sugary drinks, and uh, you know, but it should be up to the individual. Not it shouldn't be regulated. Well, I, I you know, I um, the, the thing was he he wanted to ban all sodas, even diet sodas, you know, yeah. and that he that, wants to ban everything. Yeah, um, guns. It, it, well, it, it, uh, he was. I don't know. I he I think he did a couple of things that were. Not, I didn't approve of, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't vote for him for president. I mean, I would if he was on the candidate. I'd have to, but uh, I don't, I don't think that he's my my guy. I'll tell you, every day in every way, Buttigieg is looking better and better. You know, you just don't. He just doesn't have a track record, so you don't. Well, neither uh, did. What? How much of a track record did Donald Trump have? Well, you don't like Donald Trump. No, but how much of a track record did he have? Well, then I rest my case. Yeah. You know, if you don't like Trump, uh, but you like Buttigieg because he doesn't have a track record, when you no, find I didn't out say I didn't that say that I didn't useless. like I didn't say didn't say that I didn't like Trump because he didn't have a track record. I didn't like Trump because he's the most onerous human being in the on the planet. He's a disgusting, vile creature. 
Okay. I'm sorry, Phil just lost his lunch. Josh, what do you think? What do you, what do you, what's your thinking of Judge right now? I'm, I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> this is by Donald Trump. Oh, my God. <laughs> is that a cap made for the size of that monkey? No. Oh, it's, it's, it's made cap. for the size of your head. Yeah, yeah, anyway, anyway, Josh, let, put him away. It's distracting us. <laughs> Uh, Josh, what do you what do you think of Buttigieg? I'm not a fan of Buttigieg. I wouldn't vote for him. Why are you not a fan? Well, I mean, uh, a couple reasons. The one of them that I just can't really quantify for people is, and some people aren't going to like it. Is sometimes you just watch someone speak or see them on TV and. I, you know, you can't help it, but you just get a feeling where you just say, "I don't like that guy," or "I don't like that woman." You yeah. know, for for the job, I don't. I mean, it's not a personal thing. I mean, you know, it's not like I wouldn't, you know, help the guy if he were stranded on the side of the road or anything. I'm just saying, he's running for president, and you know, my initial reaction is I just don't, I don't see it, don't don't feel it, you know. Yeah. And, but but on top of that, I mean. A couple other reasons. One, I don't think that he's electable in an election mm. versus Trump. Yeah, I really don't. Uh, two, I, 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 I'm just not one of these people that thinks that the way to, you know, shake up Washington is to send someone there that's never been there before. I'm sorry, I just don't believe that. I know that a lot of Americans have something against professional politicians. I am in the probably extreme minority and that I do not. I think professional politicians oh, I, founded this nation and framed this nation, and I think they did a fine job. Well, I, I, I agree with you, though, Josh, because I've, I've said to people, I mean, if you're going to have somebody uh, come in and fix your plumbing, you're not going to get an amateur. You want somebody who can fix the plumbing. And, yeah. and while we find the job somewhat onerous and the way they do their business somewhat onerous, the fact of the matter is that when push comes to shove, if you're going to get somebody to go to Washington to represent you, you want somebody who knows how to do it. Yeah, and, and, and I think that he's a little bit, and this is coming from someone who I think is probably the same age as him, I, I think he's a little bit too young. I mean, he's not too, he's, he's qualified as far as the constitutional requirement. So I think, you know, yeah. that's fine. I mean, he's allowed to run. I'm okay. not saying Let me can. ask you this. In my opinion, okay. if he were the same age and he had been a, a, a congressman for the last eight or nine years or something, I would look at it a little bit different. But he's, I mean, he's a, what, a 37-year-old, 38-year-old mayor from, you know, fucking South Bend or what? I mean, I, 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 I just, to me, I just don't see it. Isn't there a lot of crime in South Bend? And they're, and, and they're having a, a number of issues. Yeah, but, uh, do you, I don't know that he's doing how such can, a good how, job. No, how can you, no, you can't, you can't blame that on Are you talking about him. Elf on the Shelf? Who's that? An elf on the Shelf is is Pete Buttigieg. That's her yeah. name for him. Uh, <laughs> You can't you can't blame that on him, Phil. I mean, you you've got to you got to blame the economics of the area. There are a lot of other reasons that that kind of thing exists, you know. But the point is that uh, okay, so so you don't like Buttigieg, but who who of the of the pack do you like, or is there anybody? Uh, I mean, I've really I've supported Biden from the beginning because I believe from the beginning. One, that he's qualified to be president. I mean, he's probably the most qualified of the people running in terms of experience. Right. And in terms of political abilities. And I also think he's the most qualified in terms of electability versus Donald Trump. Well, you know, which will the, be the person that this nominee runs against. I mean, that's pretty settled. Yeah. Well, he, but here, here people don't believe that. I, that's fine. I understand that. He, but I do. Here's the thing. Um, you know, when you talk about experience. Who of all the people running for president in the last, God, last uh, 15, 20 years, 30 years, was the most experienced? General Haig. No, he didn't run for president. Well, yeah, he did. He, well, he, he ran in the primaries against uh, I'll tell you Bush. who was. And, of course, well, and, think, and nobody... I, nobody I think, Huh? I think the first George Bush was probably one of the most experienced people to ever run for the presidency mm -hmm. yeah. of the United States. I got somebody. Be I got somebody better. 
Hillary uh, Clinton. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Hillary I'm, has I held. mean, look at what she was. She was yeah. she, she was uh she was a Secretary of State. She Just was a was an ambassador. I mean, not an ambassador, but a uh, um, what do you call it, senator? I mean, yeah. you can go on and on with her. Her experience was very deep. They and made her a senator. That guy who retired in New York. I forget uh, about it. She may, might have been made a senator, but nevertheless, she was a senator. And since right. she had done all these various functions, she knew how the how how the country worked better than I know how to take a crap in the toilet, but that doesn't mm -hmm. make me a plumber. You know? What does that mean, Fell? Well, Hillary Clinton was made a senator. What did she ever do? She did nothing. She was and, a secretary and when, of state. And, and she fucked up things when she was secretary of state. All I what know did, is what did she what did she fuck up as what did she fuck up as secretary of state? Uh, she fucked up the uh, the uh, uranium deal with the Russians. Uh, I believe uh, Benghazi was another uh, another. Well, that thing. was her getting, fault. That was her fault. Getting aid to the. Uh, that was her fault. Yeah. How obviously. was that? How was that her fault? And then fault? she covered it. Wait a minute. Up. Wait a minute. How was she that? She covered it how up. How was that her? How was that her movie? fault? How was that her fault, Phil? Well, it was her fault because she covered it up. Look, covered it's what up? The Benghazi uh, uh, thing. Covered. She said it was. Due to uh, cartoons and a and a movie uh, that uh, that they was were the up original that was the original thought that was flown by after about a week that notion was gone. Yeah, uh, come on, it's absolute no, bullshit. No, Phil, Phil, um, Benghazi was caused by the ambassador. He ha he. He helped. He put himself he, in harm's he way. Fucked, he fucked up. He was told, do not go to Benghazi. Okay? And he said, I want to go to Benghazi. And he took his people with him. And that happened. And he was warned not to. Okay? Uh, so, a, hmm? oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, but in terms of the current political debate, it, none of that stuff to me really matters. The argument was over whether or not experience is important to be president and you were just arguing that she had a lot of experience yeah and i mean whether or not she was any good at it i guess is just it, it doesn't matter that's like saying some places want to hire a supervisor and they say well i only want to hire someone that's been a supervisor before okay well just because you've been a supervisor somewhere for 10 years doesn't mean you were any good i mean right. you could have been the worst fucking supervisor that place ever had and here's this guy over here Who's never been a supervisor before, never been given an opportunity. He would do ten times the job. So it's a it's a matter of philosophy. Some people say I'll give anyone a chance, and some people say no, I'll only hire people who have done the job before. You know, I mean, in the case of the Los Angeles Rams, if they would have said, "Oh, we're only going to hire someone who's been a head coach before," you know, Sean McVay would still be watching game film in some dark room somewhere, and they would have missed out on an N NFC Championship game and a Super Bowl. So that's a philosophical question that owners and managers and people make and that's what the american people will have to decide i mean i just think that all the argument over this you know crap that happened five eight nine ten years mm -hmm. ago whether she was any good at it doesn't matter because she's not running for president sometimes i wish some people in the republican party and in the democrat party would fucking maybe wake up and realize i'll, I'll that. tell she's you I think, for president. Who I, cares? I think biden has a problem and the problem has been caused by donald trump uh, in his desire to negate him as a candidate, Biden as his competition, he asked the Ukraine for something he should have never asked them for. But in the process, he still tainted Biden, no matter what. You know, he managed to do the deed. Because people are now thinking, well, did Biden do something wrong? You know. And, and I don't think particularly Biden did anything wrong. I think his son should have never taken that position. But I don't think Biden did anything wrong. But you're not going to convince the American public of that because it's now inculcated in their minds that Biden might have done something wrong, even though that was the only thing that Trump wanted to get in people's minds. And he was, he's been successful at it, I think. And so therefore, brilliant. therefore, he is, don't say brilliant when you say Donald Trump, Phil. Well, uh, that's what he did. Brilliant. And, and and he'll take down the next one and the next one and the next one. Well, I'm, exactly. That's what fight. he does. That's not what he did. That's what he does. Yeah. And yeah. He's good at it. But, you know, I don't think that uh, Bernie is a good idea. 
And I don't think that Elizabeth Warren's a good idea. Uh, so who does that leave us with? I mean, we're, we're so getting, I, I guess uh, what I'm saying is maybe you can. I've been taking shit for this for you know months, but maybe some people can slowly start to see my process of elimination that went on in my brain when I decided who I was. Could we could we easily assume here after this little discussion that maybe the Democrats have nobody? They got Yang. Uh, I mean, I, yeah. It's pretty damn close. Right. I yeah. think that we are wait, wait, wait. Running pretty damn short. close to what, Kevin? I, I think we're pretty close to, to having nobody except yeah. Biden, really. Yeah. Yeah. You and, got and I, Yang. Think, you got I, Yang. I, I, I could concede your point that in the overall realm of national politics, we are running short on good and decent people to run for these offices. We had I fucking mean, 24 <laughs> we had, of we, we had 24 people at one point running. You would think there would be one in that batch. Yeah, one. Well, you know, and and, and, and there, I mean nationally of both parties by the way. So, but go ahead, Gavin. Yeah. Is there is there still one that's going to pop in somewhere? That's what I'm wondering. Is there still somebody that's going to pop in out of, you know, in the, at the last part of the race here in you know, in the next couple months? Uh, that's what I keep looking for. But uh, who? That's possible. You know, they, they, a lot of people go, oh, Michelle Obama. But she Michelle Obama want... or Oprah or wh whoever. No, I don't know. Michelle you know, Obama. Like... But she doesn't want it. She doesn't want no. anything to do with it. Yeah. yeah, it, it's, it, Who could it be? How about you, Kathleen? Do you have anybody in this race that even interests you? So we're. No. Do you just feel we're in a lot of trouble? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I do. Uh, I saw an interview uh, with uh, Andrew Yang and uh, what's his name? Ray Renati saw the same interview and we both came away saying, you know, Andrew Yang is a surprisingly intelligent uh, a guy. I, you know, maybe he's not the, the best at selling himself well, he's the, uh, to the he, public. He, here's his, here's his, here's right, his campaign. He is, but, but Here, he's the same thing yeah. as Buttigieg. I don't think he's electable. Probably here, not. Here, Andrew Yang, uh, to begin with, I don't want your opinion on who should run because you'd want anybody to run who couldn't win. No, that's uh, not true. I, I want somebody to run that will be the best for the country. I think that Trump is the best for the country, but that doesn't mean that I would want someone else to run and lose. Well, can I, can I sum up Yang? Can I, that isn't can I sum up uh, Yang's campaign so far in, in one little routine here? Yeah, the thousand yeah. dollars. You get a car, and you get a car, and you yeah. get a car. Yeah, he, 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 that's not who he is, and and I think whoever is feeding him what to say is doing him a big disservice because his whole thing is, you know, the economy is changing, uh, robotics are going to be a big part of it, mm -hmm. and we're going to need to do something to prepare the people to to deal with this and re-educate themselves to handle this new economy. And by giving them a uh, uh, some money uh, every month, and I don't necessarily agree that that's the right way to do it, but this is what he's saying. Uh, but by giving them this money, they they're, they can make a choice whether they want health care. They can make a choice what they want and use it any way they want. But uh, he's giving them the opportunity to, to deal with this new economy. And, and I, no one else is talking about this. Uh, Kevin I mean, constantly used to talk about, hey, how robots are, are going to take over and they're gonna, there's going to be less and less jobs. Right, Kevin? And yeah, here's a are. guy. And, right. And here's a guy that's talking about it. And uh, now, I, I just fall back in, in, with people like, you know, Andrew Yang or whatever. I mean, I won't deny his intelligence. I just think that I have watched, you know, roundtables of historians after historians and read papers and books and and come to the conclusion and like most others that some of our least effective and worst presidents were some of the smartest the most intelligent people to ever hold the office and i've just almost come to the conclusion that i mean i i don't want someone who is as stupid as donald trump and i i truly believe that he is a not a very smart individual but I, I don't know that if you tell me someone went to Harvard and I mean he, he got a twelve point oh it was the the greatest fucking graduate ever and then he went here and he went to, I, I don't care 
because some of those people were some of the most ineffective leaders this country is. John Quincy well, Adams, I, I, you know what, Wilson. You, I mean, some of the most highly Woodrow educated Wilson. people. You know what? You know. You know what? The problem that wait, we have today. You, you, some no. of this book smart and street smart. Well, uh, here's you know, here, wait, wait, here, here no. Trump. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Is that you know uh, the I, notion that somebody who's good with money makes a good president should be just gotten rid of immediately. The yeah. people that are around Trump uh, that uh, I have seen interviewed all say that Trump works in a different way than other people. When he oh, does yes, he, he does. Ha- he puts, <laughs> oh, shit. He puts people in a room, and he has them hammer it out, and then he makes his decision. So you see this conflict... Uh, uh, taking place oh, in the room, God but what he's doing he ju- he, he, is he's he, he, getting he, both sides of the issue. He just Trump got, is he, a very intelligent he, he just, guy. Oh no, you're mixed. well. You just believe in the media. You be, you know, and and uh, you know. But Phil, I don't believe the media. I listen to what the man says, and what the man says is totally and utterly idiotic. Okay. I don't you want my don't pre- I'm sorry. I don't want my president on stage using the term bullshit. Okay? I'd like About a little time. more dignity for my president. Yeah, well, you know, everybody's got dignity, dignity. But, you know, meanwhile this guy is getting stuff done. He's, I can he's say bu- against- I can say bullshit because I'm doing a a, a second rate uh, podcast here, but the fact is when you're president of the United States, you're setting the tone for the rest of the nation. Wait a You're minute. Setting this the- is the. I'm sorry, Alex. This is the number one podcast on GabNet, and don't you forget. I I, I realize that. Okay, now, stop putting it down. Serving over a dozen people. <laughs> <laughs> a baker's dozen. Huh? Yeah. yeah. A baker's dozen. That that's a royal flush. How was everybody's Thanksgiving? Good. What did you do? Baked, cooked. Yeah, made a turkey. I sug- yep. Yeah. Uh, what is your signature part of that meal? Because don't say the turkey, because the turkey is either good or bad on its own for the most part. You know? Probably for my son, it was the yams because I used uh, apple, apple brandy. Okay. See? Because, I mean, would you agree with me that the turkey is just something that does it? It's either a good turkey or it's a bad turkey. Well, what I did you know? with the turkey is I went across the street and picked some rosemary out of Jim's front yard, my yeah. neighbor, yeah. my domino buddy. Yeah. And then I picked an orange from my neighbor behind me and I chopped it up and I rinsed off the rosemary and I shoved it into the turkey and then I... I um, baked it and it just came out fantastic yeah but part of it has to do with having a good turkey that isn't too dry or whatever when it's cooked right uh we had a splendid turkey here but marjorie does uh she does a she did a stuffing that is killer stuffing i mean it's Mm. just blows your mind um uh, you know, with uh, with sausage in it and apple and uh, uh, very very little breading in it. You know, it was just wonderful. Uh, and um, you know, what's interesting. I got to tell you this. We we <clears throat> it started out that we just invited our friends Jack and uh, and and Natalia over to be with us for Thanksgiving. And as you know, Jack has not been well lately, and he's 88. And all of a sudden, as two other people said, oh, we have no place to go, so we, okay, come on over. Finally, before we knew it, we had nine people, <laughs> right? And she bought too small a turkey. But also, was this dressing like herosis, you know, where you don't... Uh, I, I'm telling a story here, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm thinking about the dressing. <laughs> no. Uh, so uh, um, there was this one woman there who was 93 who came over with somebody. And my, you know, my friend Jack has been ailing, and he's hardly, you know, he's just sitting at the table kind of like not entirely 100% aware of where he is. He's 88. This woman is 93 and sharp as a nail. I mean, she was just... The, one of the most amazing women I've met, especially at her age. Um, 
And I just went, you know, you never know the way the die is cast as to how yeah. you're going to age. And no two people, you know, you would think if she was 93, she'd be in worse shape than Jack. No. No way. My mother is 91. Yeah. She doesn't take any pills. She still exercises. She mm -hmm. acts. She's do she does commercials. Uh, she does yoga and uh, drives, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, she's, you know, amazing. You would think that she was yeah. early, late 70s, early 80s. But that, that was my treat at the Thanksgiving table. I mean, she was sitting next to me, and I went, oh, boy, this is going to be a night of misery because it's going to be somebody going, what would you say? No. I was holding this whole conversation with her and, you know, <coughs> and talking about politics, <coughs> everything. Of course, we didn't talk politics at the table, even though everybody there was of the same bent. But it's been said that this year, at a lot of Thanksgiving tables, people are not mentioning politics. They're straying Smart. away from it because if you got nine people there, at least two of them are going to believe the asshole's doing a great job. <laughs> There'd be a food fight. There'd be a food fight, and why have misery on... So nobody was talking politics at Thanksgiving tables this year. Probably smart. What, you, what, did, you, what did you do for Thanksgiving, uh, Phil? Uh, I went to... Uh, I, I didn't invite anybody over, and I didn't get invited anywhere. Uh, there's you a know, reason for that, uh, you know. So I went uh, to a Brazilian... Steakhouse, and uh, it, you know it's a new one that just opened up in Walnut Creek. So uh, you know, I, oh yeah, I, our forefathers when they had the first Thanksgiving had a nice table full of Brazilian uh, meat. meat. And I, so I decided, yeah. you know, I'd do an international thing. I'd support the Brazilians. Uh, the service was great. The salad bar was. Pretty good. I've been at Brazilian steakhouses, and the salad bar at those places are somebody phenomenal. Just, somebody just wrote, Alex, please replace Phil with his mom. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, then uh, but the meat, it was salty. And uh, I, I don't think I'd go back. Yeah, yeah. I've been there's a there's a Brazilian steakhouse. Well, in San that, uh, I don't even want to know then how you spent Thanksgiving because you didn't spend Thanksgiving. You spent I don't know Brazilian Hanukkah or something. I don't know. Well, I gave thanks over at the Brazilian restaurant. Right. Yeah. Right. How about you, Josh? What What'd you do? Uh, the night before, we were staying in a hotel somewhere uh, together, but we came home that day and we we didn't go anywhere or do anything. I don't. I don't typically go to my family's gatherings, so. Did you make a turkey or anything like that? No. Yeah, no. Her, her and I don't usually do much for yeah. the holidays. Because I like, I, uh, like thanks, I like Thanksgiving because it's the one holiday that really is just kind of nice. You know, there's nothing, there's no religion associated with it. There's no great pressure unless you're the person having to make the dinner, you know. Uh, yeah. It's and it's just eat and enjoy each other's company. How about you, Kevin? What'd you what you do? Uh, we had ours here. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be up at my mom's at the the new home, the new uh, apartment at her uh, uh, elderly living home mm -hmm. that she moved into last year. Yeah, last uh, six months ago, whatever. And it uh, kind of got turned around and ended up at our house which was a, a chore for her to get down here. You know, it's a 150 miles away. So yeah. my brother, who I haven't talked to almost all year, decided he was going to come down here because he decided to take her down here. And that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there Where was the one people... Trump joke he brought up, and it, it just brought crickets to the dinner table. Hey, uh, where do people stay when uh, you have relatives? Do they stay in a hotel or do they stay at your house? Oh, they didn't stay. They oh. just came down and left. Uh, you know, 150 on miles and then you eat and go? Yeah, they just came. We we have early, you know, we, we had dinner about 3 o'clock in yeah. the afternoon, 3.30. And then they left about an hour and a half or so later after dinner. And they get home, they get back up to the, you know, Berlin game to yeah. about Eight o'clock or so. Now you did, uh, uh, Kathleen. You did Thanksgiving at home at your place this year, right? 
Yeah, because usually we go up to my parents, but in lieu of what's happened. And it's my son's favorite holiday, so it was nice. You know, we just stayed home, and I, you know, cooked everything. We got a lot of invites to uh, other people's places, but, um, you know, I thanked them and basically said we just wanted to, you know, stay home, and I mm. built a fire, you know. Did you have anybody we had else really over? Nice Thanksgiving. Did you have anybody else over, or? Um, no. Mm, okay. What about your father? Your son's favorite holiday is Thanksgiving? Yeah. yeah. He, he despises Christmas because the whole thing's a lie. What about Halloween? You know? Nope. I mean, <laughs> no. The devil's night as far as he's concerned. No, he's I, just a bunch I, of bullshit. I, I, of I really like her son. She's done a good job raising him because I believe, to me, Thanksgiving was always my favorite holiday. Yes. Uh, I hated Christmas because, to begin with, I was Jewish. And it was always like I couldn't even begin to start celebrating it. You mm -hmm. know? Well, that's because you killed Christ. And you know, no, he, it was <laughs> the Romans. Come on. If he, yeah, com if he comes. Jews. And if he comes. No, you can't did it. Pontius, oh, Pilate, hey. Pontius Pilate had all the power in his hands. The Jews shot Osiris. Oh, yeah. Here we go. My son's laughing his ass off. Don't get my mom started. Did uh, did he see the Warriors, uh, the movie? No, but you know what? I'll have to show him because he'd really like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Alex was uh, going around the table. Uh, no, uh, we've already gone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then, they, then they, I, I, you know, the problem is that uh, uh, Jeff is so quiet. Uh, Jeff. First of all, we had <laughs> steak. No turkey. Brazilian? Nope. Then you didn't celebrate Thanksgiving. <laughs> I guess. You know, that, I mean, it maintain. It don't have to be turkey yeah. anymore. A lot of people are going to prime rib, ham, and all kinds of different stuff now. So I'll tell you what happens. You're coming down this weekend. We're going to so yeah. have lunch together. Uh, but Marjorie still has turkey and turkey soup, <laughs> and we're going to force it down your throat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's what I made yesterday because I was off, so I played Little House Not on the Prairie. I baked homemade bread, and I made turkey soup. Mm. Mm. Well, she makes turkey soup, but she makes it in these these kettles, okay? She yeah. literally makes soup for an army, and then yeah. I've got to eat it all week long. She's That's been what brewing I did. one for the last two days now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and I don't mind it, but she could make it in slightly smaller batches because I'm sorry, I don't want to do like uh, oh I don't know mushroom barley soup for four or five days. You know, it's good for maybe <laughs> two like nights. Two nights I can go for it. But and she makes great soups. Or I think it was um, it was um, um, uh, Albert who said that she doesn't make soup. Uh, she makes a stew. That's really what it nice. is because yeah. it's so thick and good. She's really the soup maker. Yeah, she'll leave a little bit here and then take the other three gallons to work. Yeah, well, my, she's we've, she's got these little containers. She bought a whole bunch of them, and she takes them to work and pu nice. pushes her soup on everybody. Hey, you know. uh, I got uh, no fill tomorrow. There's the uh, banquet for the photography club. Oh, good. And then is the photography club off for the year? Uh, yeah. Okay. Until January. Too bad. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's, that's it. I'm glad, you know, we finally got a show going here after, uh, equipment problems and all of that. And to you people listening to the audio only version, it starts in the middle. What can I say? Hey, listen, thank you, uh, Kathleen. Always love seeing you, darling. Uh, uh, you must come see us again. <laughs> Uh, 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 Jeff Stein, thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you to uh, Kevin. And thanks uh, to, of course, uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Josh Wheeler. I'm, I'm, I'm losing it. Hey, all of you people, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back. Okay, there they go. That's our... Uh, that's our people, okay? And we, we finally got our Skype going. And, uh, it, life is better, okay? All right. Anyway, uh, what, what's wrong with the audio here? 
We're having audio problems. Okay, anyway, uh, we've got to go. Uh, uh, the show next is the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop. We'll see you again tomorrow night uh, at uh, 10 o'clock. Same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Yeah.